TV on the rise with the dawn of the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64, many companies tried to take the leap to 3D with varying amounts of success. Nintendo managed to cement themselves pretty early on with the best 3D platformer on the market with Super Mario 64, and The Legend of Zelda's 3D outing was also a huge success and is widely considered one of the best in the series. In Japan, games like Brave Fencer Masashi and Dew Prism, released by Squaresoft, tried to follow in the footsteps of Ocarina of Time's fame and Puzzle Dungeon theme to try and claim some of the fans of the action-adventure genre to themselves. Dew Prism, known in America as Threads of Fate, was released in Japan in October of 99 and in North America in July of 2000. The story follows the path of two characters on their quest to obtain an item simply referred to as the Relic. Rue, one of our heroes, desires the Relic to resurrect his friend Claire, while Mint wants to reclaim her right to rule from her sister Maya. While both characters have their motivations in separate story, the game doesn't go on a tangent large enough to differentiate their progress throughout the game, but has different endings for each. The game is pretty good looking for a title released in the turn of the millennium, adopting a more super deformed style with a colorful cast of characters that really brings out their personality. The character models themselves are pretty varied and have some good looking designs, but the environment could use a bit more polish in that regard. Dungeons look very similar in layout, though it offers plenty of varied locations to explore. The town that serves as a main hub for your expeditions is small but has personality. There's quite a few NPCs that are interesting to talk to and will offer advice from time to time, even when you reach certain points in the game, which can be useful if you don't know what to do. There's shops where you can buy gear to enhance stats, but these are one-time only purchases and are added automatically to your stats. You're basically buying stat increases instead of gear to equip. There's other areas outside the main hub you can explore, like a small camp near the outskirts of town where you can duel a swordsman who crafts his own blades, and challenging him gives you extra gold to spend on more gear. There's a back alley with a pub, with a man who sells you drinks, and another shop which sells you much higher priced stat boosts. At the very top of the center plaza there's a church where you can pray, and donating there will give you coins, which you can use to continue playing after you die in combat. You get bronze through platinum coins, and each coin gives you full health if you perish in battle, and recovers a fraction of your MP bar, which is needed for magic or other monster special abilities. Combat is different for each character. Rue can transform into monsters he defeats, and by collecting their coins he gains access to that monster's abilities. Mint is slightly different, in which she uses magic to defeat enemies and go through puzzles which require different elemental spells to go through. Mint can switch elements to use different magic depending on the enemy's weakness, and collecting drops from monsters grants additional firing modes for each element. Both characters are interesting to use, and difficulty-wise are pretty similar, though I believe Mint's playthrough to be easier. The combat mechanics are, to be perfectly honest, not so great. Hit detection is fine, and your character's animations look awesome, but the game has an artificial difficulty that makes an otherwise easy game into a frustrating one. Both you and every enemy has invincibility frames when knocked down, but when getting up, you have no choice but to fall down again simply because you get hit once more and this cycle can be endless until you get killed. It is annoying to say the least and adds more frustration to the game that it already has with its camera. The perspective doesn't help at all with platforming and falling to pit steals damage. Health can only be restored by killing monsters and herein lies my problem with this game. All of these tiny issues build upon themselves to become a nuisance, and a hindrance to an otherwise enjoyable experience. The only really glaring and rage-inducing part of my whole playthrough was during a section where you go and meet a character to help you, and need to go to her house in the forest. You meet with some tiny gnome-like helpers, and you have to go through their platforming minigames in order to progress. They do mention you can just wait or play them, but in truth, the minigames are mandatory, and with platforming not being the best, it is extremely frustrating and simply not fun. Not to mention the music in these stages is annoying and on a very small 30 second loop that just leaves you angrier. I grew up playing games like this, so I believe it wouldn't be an issue with difficult mechanics like this, and I came in expecting a very different experience. After some odd hours with Rue's route, however, it is clear that these issues are a very big hindrance to what is hidden beneath them, a wonderful and thoughtful character development that, although cliché in many regards, has some pretty solid character development and plenty of hilarious scenes. The music is nothing to write home about. It serves its purpose, but it won't blow you away. Some scenes could use more apt music, like the intro to Rue's story. When Claire is attacked, the same music is playing throughout the entire intro sequence, which kills the mood and any impact the scene had in establishing the character dies with it. Still, it's serviceable, I guess, though you will find it tiring after a while. In my honest opinion, there's really no standout in this soundtrack, aside from maybe the intro cutscene theme. The rest just feels like each track is about 30 seconds and loops endlessly. It's not something you'll be eager to listen outside gameplay on a playlist, unlike many RPGs of its generation. 
Threads of Fate is blemished by many small things that hurt the overall experience. It's not a bad game, you can get some enjoyment out of it and still come back for more, but honestly there's no real reason to do so after doing both characters' playthroughs. And unless you plan on speedrunning the game, which is a pretty fun run to watch, there's really no greater incentive to come back to it. The game is also pretty short if you ignore the most of the side items you can acquire at around 7 hours per character route, giving you an average of about 17 hours to complete the game and get the secret ending by clearing both, but if you want to go for a completionist route and get all the good items and stat boosts, be prepared for a 30 plus hour game. With that said, I give Threads of Fate a silver medal. Maybe it's just me, but I just could not find enjoyment out of my frustration with it. If you played this game back when it came out and loved it, great, but personally, it's not as good as most think it is, and no amount of nostalgia can hide its faults. The interesting characters and funny moments are overshadowed by the camera and average combat mechanics. It is better than a lot of other games on the system and of that generation, as the art style and polish on character models and animations is superb, the writing is pretty good, but sorely needed a bit more polish on environment, music and combat to make it truly stand out among the many greats of its time. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review, if you did consider leaving a like and if you would like to discuss anything related to the game please leave a comment below and share your thoughts. For more reviews like this be sure to subscribe and tune in every Saturday. This has been Zeldrak and I'll see you next time.